Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins and today I'd like to take you through my top tips, particularly for beginner card makers, but also if you're experienced and finding you're having issues and you don't know how to get around them. So these are how to fix 10 mistakes that you may be making when you're crafting. This includes things like using the wrong colouring medium for your stamped images, how to fix upside down cards, and how to make fussy cutting even easier for you. So enjoy these tips and tricks and let us know in the comments below which one's your favourite. How many times have you just stuck your mats and layers down only to discover that you've done it upside down? Oh, it's so frustrating. But there's two things that you can do to fix this really, really quickly. The first one is actually my favorite and all I do is I turn this over and on the back panel, I fold this in half. So I take my scoreboard And I'm going to use the Creative Craft Products Trimmer. This actually has a scoring blade on it, so I'm going to use this. And I'm going to use my scoring blade to score along the back. Now we've got our score line, and we'll fold that. So what we can do is bring our card front to the first one, fold this over. We can put some glue just here. I tend to like to use the Creative Craft Products book binding glue for anything that's paper or cardstock. I just think it's absolutely fabulous and sticks really, really quickly. I'm going to push that on there. And once that's dry, we have got a different stand for a card that will stand all on its own. Isn't that just absolutely brilliant? It's such a quick fix as well. You've still got room for your message. Now, if you prefer not to create yourself a card that's a little bit like an easel card, like this, um, you can do something else instead. So, if you've used double-sided tape to stick this down with, you can take your heat tool and you can actually warm up the glue, warm up the tape, and you can usually manage to remove it. So, I'm just going to use the heat tool and just warm this up takes a few moments just ensure you've got no heat embossing that you're going to be affecting on there and already I can see my tape is starting to gently lift there you go how quick is that so let's do the other end I'm not pulling at it I'm not damaging the cardstock in any way at all. And the great thing is that this is now still sticky. So if I wanted to turn that over and reposition it, I could. So let's now pop this back on. I haven't had to apply any additional glue. Perfect. When you're fussy cutting images out, it's very easy to move your scissors around and think you're getting around all the angles. But actually, it is so much easier and neater if you keep your scissors facing forwards and just turn the paper. So all you need to do is now and then just open the scissors and gently close them again as you guide the paper around. This is so time saving and much less strain on your fingers and on your wrists. If you like to use uh, sprays that have any sort of mica or powder in the bottom of them, and of course, to before you use them, you're going to need to shake them. Whatever you do, do not shake up and down. That's a really, really bad thing to do, because what happens is that mica that's sat at the bottom goes up into the tube that's down the middle. So what you want to do with these is just roll them between your hands or shake them side to side. You still get all the powder mixed in beautifully and nothing's going to start clogging up the tube that's inside. Now I could do an entire video just on tips and techniques for ink blending, but here are my favorite ones. So when you're applying ink to your brush or your foam applicator, you want to really load the brush up. If you're just dabbing on like so and start blending, that's really not going to get you much ink at all. That's going to take you a long time to start building that up. So what you want to do is, I like to go around in circles to really get all the angles of the bristles covered in ink, or you could swipe if you prefer, but make sure you're applying a decent pressure 
and really getting lots of ink build up on your brush. And then let's come to another corner. Look at the difference that makes. So much more ink there to work with then. Now when it comes to ink blending, another tip is to use a resistant mat and of course to work off the mat onto the cardstock. So I'm not going directly onto the cardstock, I'm actually taking my ink first to my mat and then dragging it on like so. And this always means there's a little more ink there ready for you to drag on, so if you need to start building it up you can, but you don't accidentally take too much to the paper at once. Now if you enjoy heat embossing, there's a few tips that I learned the hard way and I'm sure many other crafters did as well. So I've just got some clear embossing ink here. I'm going to put it onto the middle of my ink blended background. Just press that down. Now the first thing is do not rock your acrylic block. If you have a stamping platform, definitely use that um, because that's going to give you more accurate precision. But if you have a block like this, it's really tempting to rock it backwards and forwards. In an ideal world, you use a block as small as possible for your image or your sentiment and just press straight down. Now you can usually see through uh, where the stamp is actually pressing the paper, so you shouldn't need to rock it around. Now I've done that, I'm going to apply my white embossing powder. And I'm going to tap that into my card base that I just used to capture my powder. And what's happened here is I have got sprinklings of powder all the way around. If I was to heat set this now, that would just look a complete mess. It wouldn't look very good at all. And that's because I ink blended my background, but then I didn't let it dry thoroughly. So what you can do is you can leave this for a little while start tapping off the excess as this ink dries. Now in theory, this blended ink, which in my case was a Distress Oxide, or if you're using a Distress ink, the ink blended, blending background should dry before your embossing ink dries. So you can remove it all, but that will smudge your embossing, embossing ink and that will take a long time to dry. I would say just keep tapping, give it a little while, then tap again, and wait and it may be that you're left with just your sentiment embossed as you wanted. If you find that's not happening and when you start tapping it starts coming off from your sentiment as well because your embossing ink is also drying at the same rate, that's when you can quite happily remove it all, allow everything to dry, either air dry or bring in your heat tool and dry it off thoroughly then use your anti-static bag all over the top and then start the process again of stamping and adding your embossing powder. When I have a brand new stamp, I'm really keen to just get stamping with it and uh, I don't think about prepping it, but you really, really should. Only when a stamp is brand new for the first time. So I'm going to go in with my normal stamping ink over this new stamp and I'm going to stamp it now. This isn't a bad image, but I can see I've got a few little missed spots there, and this is going to happen even more so if you like to stamp with water-based inks. So what I tend to do first is go in with a pencil eraser, just a simple pencil eraser, brush over the surface there, and this is going to remove any of the residue that's left on there from the manufacturing process. This is going to give you a really clear image because the ink sticks to the stamp much much better so let's just go over this image again and this is why a stamping platform is really important as well because you can do this perfect I've got a really really solid image here and I haven't got any issues with any missed spots whatsoever now when you're working with larger stamps also, even if you've primed it, occasionally you might find that you actually have missed spots and I'll show you what they could look like. So let's stamp this entire surface of this butterfly, pop it over and this only really applies to large area stamps. You see we have areas that have slightly missed. Now what this usually is, is actually air bubbles underneath the stamp. So once you've positioned it on your paper and you've picked it up, if you take the actual stamp, hold it down in the middle and just lift up the edges or the top and bottom and roll it down, just to make sure that there's absolutely no air trapped under there whatsoever. And then something else I really like to do is 
if I have a difficult stamp that I'm really struggling to get all the detail in is pop a rubber mat, a thin rubber mat underneath my paper so that when I stamp I have a little bit of give and all the areas of the stamp can then reach the paper. Now on to die cutting and one of the things that often makes my projects look quite messy is residue on my die cutting plate. Now this can look really really bad if you're particularly die cutting white cardstock. All these little pieces that are embedded into your plate can easily transfer onto that white cardstock. So in the first instance I just take a, wipe, a wet baby wipe and I just rub over. So I just go like so and try to get up what I can. I mean, look at that straight away. Now, if you find that this is not getting in the detail, you can get yourself an old toothbrush or something like that. I've also found that just warming up your plate ever so slightly, and I wouldn't do this very much at all, but just a slight warm does help to release some of those papers. Just like that, they come out much, much easier. So a lot of people suggest putting your plates into hot water for a little while and then a lot of the paper will come away. That's great because that will also soften the paper as well, make it easier to get out. But I would do this on a regular basis. I would be doing this around every week or two, but obviously depending on how much you die cut. And did you know there's actually a right and wrong way of scoring or folding your scored lines? So once you've scored, usually we would just fold in on ourselves, but actually that's not the right way to do it. Apparently, folding over this way makes for a much better and neater fold. Now I always use the edge of my bone folder just to smooth down those creases. And let's take a look, we have no cracking at all and we have a really nice fold. Now the last and probably the most confusing thing of paper craft and card making is which inks to use when you're stamping and then colouring in images. So I've stamped with four different inks. As you can see, uh, some of them are fresher ink pads than others. Some of them are darker. This one definitely needs replacing soon. But I've used a Versafine, a Memento, um, a Distress Ink, excuse the label, but that's my Distress Ink, and a Stazon. Now the Stazon is solvent. Uh, the Distress Ink is water-based, and that's a dye ink. This is also a dye ink, and this is a pigment ink. Okay, so what I've done is I've stamped all four images the same on the same paper and I've coloured, started colouring in with both watercolours, so that's this right hand side wing on these two and alcohol pens on the left hand wings. Now you can see with the top two, Versafine and Memento, I can use both colouring mediums absolutely fine, no issues there. We've got a very slight amount of maybe bleeding with the watercolour on the pigment but that's probably just because I didn't let it dry enough. Um, if you heat set that it'll be absolutely fine. Now with the uh, Distress Ink, this is water-based, so I already know that if I am to apply water to this, and I'll stick to the same side, I am going to get quite a lot of um, sort of a ghost line, so it's going to start bleeding into the water. Now that may take a few moments, so you'll think, oh it's all good, I'm fine, I can, you know, I can carry on painting, I've had, that's had no effect on it. But as that soaks into the paper and starts to react with the ink, what you'll find is after a very, very short time, that ink is just going to start bleeding through. So we'll come back to this in just a moment when we can see the effect there. And then I already know that alcohol pens will be absolutely fine. So alcohol and water are fine together. They don't uh, react with each other. So if I use my alcohol pen on here, I can see I'm keeping my nice clear images. So already we can see without having to come back, that's starting to affect that outline on that image. Now over to the solvent ink. This is the opposite. So if we apply water to the solvent, it's not an issue because this is, as I said, solvent. It's the opposite. So it's almost like alcohol base. It's the opposite of water. So I haven't got an issue applying water to this. It's not going to affect the outlines. But alcohol pen, particularly if you saturate the paper, that is going to start affecting your lines because alcohol and alcohol, one reacts with the other. So again, as with the uh, watercolour, you'll find that 
that will very soon start having an effect on the outline in the same way as it did with the water here. So those outlines won't remain clear, particularly if you're ink blending and you're really sort of blending into the paper and rubbing that, that's just going to start giving you these really blurry lines. So make sure whichever medium you're using for colouring stamped images, you choose the appropriate ink pad. I hope you found some of these tips and tricks helpful. If you did, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel here for more videos like this. Everything that I've used and referred to is found at Craft Stash and you can find the shop here. And we think you'll really like this video of ours just here.